good morning my dear students in this video we are going to learn about the different ways of finding whether a body is charged or uncharged so there is an instrument that we are going to learn about in this video which is called as an electroscope an electroscope is a device which is used to find out whether a body is charged or uncharged even if the body is charged we can also use this electroscope to find out whether it is positively charged or negatively charged so in this video we are going to learn about first of all two kinds of the electroscope the first one is called as the fifth wall electroscope the name comes because of the fifth wall which has been hung with a silk thread this silk thread has been used because it is an insulator fifth wall is the thing which will help us to know whether a body is charged or uncharged if we are bringing a body near to the fifth wall let us name it as a when i am bringing this body a near to the fifth wall if the fifth wall moves away or gets attracted to the conductor or to the body a then this is charged otherwise if the fifth ball remains stationary as if this conductor is not present over here then this body will be uncharged so in short you can understand that if the fifth ball either gets attracted or repelled by the body a then this body a will be supposed to be charged body if there is no effect on the fifth ball due to the presence of this body a then we'll suppose that this body a is uncharged in order to find out whether the body a is charged positively or negatively in that case what we are going to do is we'll take a ball with some charges on it which will be known let us take that ball a is positively charged now bring the conductor i mean bring the body a near to a if the body gets repelled or if the fifth ball gets repelled by the presence of the rod a then we assume that since like charge is repelled then a is also positively charged if there is attraction between the two if the fifth ball gets attracted to the rod we will assume that since the unlike charge is repelled uh, attract each other we will take that body a is has been negatively charged after this we are going to understand about the next topic which is known as the gold leaf electroscope the name gold leaf has been given due to the presence of these two gold leaves which will help us to know whether a body is charged or uncharged so let us see for the construction and first this is gold leaf electroscope in this we have taken a brass disc insulating plug over here and from here to here it has been attached with a gold leaf here we have taken some metal foil which has been earthed and a glass jar this glass is here just to protect the foil or the charges present in the foil from the effect of air or wind or from any other outer effects let us see the working over here brass is a conductor over here if you bring some charges near to the brass disc that charges will be passed on to the gold leaves if both the gold leaves will get now positively charged so what will happen the gold leaves will diverge what will happen if i am bringing a positively charged body a positively charged body a near to the gold leaf brass disc so brass disc will conduct the charges and the charges to the foil now if the foil diverges moves away from each other we can see that the gold leaves are now uh, are in this uh, body a is charged okay instead of taking a positively charged rod a even if i am taking a negatively charged rod a so what will happen this brass disc will now contain the negative charges which will be passed on to the gold leaf both the gold both the gold leaves will now get the negative charges and due to the same kind of charges they will diverge the divergence shows the presence of charges on the body a this divergence here 
will only show that the body A is charged or uncharged. If there is no divergence, body is uncharged. If the divergence is shown by the gold leaves, it represents that the body A has been charged. Now let us again find out that what are the ways by which by using this one, this particular instrument, we can find out whether a body is positively charged or negatively charged. In that case, we have to take some charges on the gold leaves at first. So let us suppose that these gold leaves are now having certain amount of negative charges on it and there is a little divergence with each other. Let us take a rod A with negative charge which is what we have to find out and bring it near to the brass disc. If the divergence increases because now it will get more amount of negative charges they will repel each other more. So if the divergence increases it will show the rod A is negatively charged. This is one case. Second case, if I am taking this rod A whose charge is unknown, it is charged but that charge is unknown. I brought it near to the gold leaf and what will happen? Let us pass some charges over here. Now what I observe that the divergence was this much now the divergence has been decreasing. So earlier it was having negative charge with some more divergence. Now when I bought a conductor A, the divergence decreased. It showed that the negative charges over the gold leaf has been decreased. So it shows that the, pos the positive charges are present over the rod A. This is how we can find out whether a body is charged or uncharged at first by bringing it near to the gold leaf. If the divergence is shown, it is charged. If there is no divergence, the body is uncharged. To find out whether a body is having positive or negative charges, we have to take a known positive charge over the gold leaf. So for here, I have taken it to be negative, which is known to me. If I am bringing a rod A and the divergence decreases, it will show that the rod A is positively charged. If I am bringing a rod A and the divergence increases further, so it will show that the body is negatively charged. So this was all about the electroscope, its working and its uses. Now let us understand about what is lightning and what is thunderstorm. Now as we know that during the rain and all, the clouds get gathered over the earth and they move from one place to another place. So when one of the clouds moves over the other cloud or when there is friction between the clouds, the charges are induced. The charges are induced. Okay, because of one cloud, if another cloud comes near to it, so what would happen? Due to induction, the charges will be induced on the other cloud as well. So, when the two charged clouds they come and collide with each other, it results in lightning. When two charged clouds will come near to each other and collide with each other due to friction lightning happens which results in the huge amount of production of light and electricity okay so this electricity is called as atmospheric electricity this was experimentally discovered by benjamin franklin there was an experiment what he performed he took a kite and at one corner of the kite he put a metal rod or a metal strip through the metal strip, the other end of the metal strip was connected in the string. Here in the string, it was connected a key and a knuckle. And he flew the kite during the rain and thunderstorm. So what happened? During the rain, when this kite became wet, so this particular part made up of metal, it acquired some electricity, it acquired some charge actually I should say. This charge was then passed through the string and then when the string came in contact with the knuckle there was a spark every time. To prevent himself from the shock or from the charges the end was made up of silk as already we have studied that silk is an insulator. So this was the concept where we can find out that the clouds also have electricity, the presence of charges, okay, which is called as atmospheric electricity.
and the lightning what we see in the atmosphere in the atmosphere at the time of rain and thunderstorm is due to the collision of the two charged clouds with each other when the clouds collide with each other they result in the production of huge amount of charges okay now this phenomenon you might have seen or might have heard in the newspaper or in the television you might have seen that due to lightning many people die okay then there are trees during the lightning the trees if the lightning strikes the tree the tree gets damaged this is all we have studied i've seen in the news and all so to prevent ourselves or our houses from the lightning there is a special arrangement that is being done in our houses which is known as lightning conductor now we'll study about lightning conductor now this is an important topic from the point of view of examination now what is lightning conductor this lightning conductor is an instrument which is being deployed at our houses to prevent our houses from the effect of the charges from the clouds to prevent our houses from the lightning it is a special type of instrument which is fixed at the top of our houses this to the house at the top of it it's a metal rod so what happens when a charged cloud comes over this conductor so due to induction what will happen it will also induce some charges over it when when we put a charged cloud near to the lightning conductor what will happen it will also induce some charges over it once the cloud has come so it will induce negative charges over it now this charges if it is not used or it is not disposed of properly so what will happen it will result in the damage of the building so in that case what is being done this rod the end of this rod is then earth the end of this rod is then earth so whatever the charges that are being produced whatever are the charges that are being produced they will be getting transferred to the earth which is at zero potential so this device is known as lightning conductor which prevents our house as well as all the appliances in our house like television refrigerator and all from the effect of lightning in the absence of this lightning conductor the tv can be blown off or the refrigerator can be blown off okay due to the presence of charges so lightning conductor is an special type of instrument which is being used to prevent the electrical appliances from the effect of lightning so in this chapter we had studied about the static electricity its kinds and the, how it is being produced how it is present in the body what are the effects and what are the uses of it i hope that you all will learn the chapter properly okay thank you everyone for watching the video